What's up guys and welcome Greetings back to the game to show Global Esports Cup. We're going to take a short trip over to the European region. Golden Boy is going up against Kaipi. KP. No one has told me that if there's a proper pronunciation for this team, so I'm probably going to end up calling them both. I'm Mike Loris, going to be your only caster for today. Now this isn't going to be the only game from the European region. Uh, they want to start a little bit earlier. We accommodated because we are good people like that. And uh, later on, we're going to have London Conspiracy going up against Monkey Freedom Fighters. That is going to be just Five, the best six, match eight. in the world. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that one. That's going to be happening. If you saw on the schedule, that was on the waiting screen earlier at 20 CET, which is 1, 3, 3 o'clock? I, I don't know. I, it's still like time conversions. It's going to be happening in a while, okay, guys? I should uh, have the stream go down between this game and the next. But for right now, but for right now, guys, we got ourselves a best of two. Kaipi going up against Golden Boys. Golden Boys, you know, kind of having a mixed Dial result uh, so far. Same thing with Kaipi. They haven't really been playing a ton of their games. And the bracket that I'm looking at is definitely not correct right now. Uh, Golden Boys did lose versus 4CL. And actually, no, it is correct. That was... Uh, they also took a win over pub players. And that is actually all the only games that they've played. So it is correct. They're at three points right now. Kaipi, they're at 1 1 1. So they should have four points. So never mind. What I'm looking at is really? definitely not correct. Whoever, whoever added this up didn't do the math properly. But uh, yeah, yeah, Kaipi, definitely interesting team Radiant to watch. Team. Uh, Golden Boys, not to say that they're bad or anything like that. They are a little bit more cookie cutter. They're a little bit more closer to the norm. Whereas for Kaipi, uh, they will pick up like four pretty standard heroes and then, you know, add a nice little twist at the end. Not a huge twist, like a Bat Rider occasionally, a Legion Commander sometimes those more like infrequent yet still kind of viable heroes that's what makes them a little bit more entertaining to watch perhaps because we don't really get to see those heroes all that remain. often now you know they may not always work but hey it's the thought that counts Five right at least remain. they're trying at least they're trying uh let's take a quick look at these bands real quick night stalker darkseer doom io uh probably queen of pain dazzle tusk pick two here for golden boys uh i think uh, going up against and dying None of those heroes are specifically any stronger than the others. Although I do really like the uh, Queen of Pain or Shadow Fiend as one pick, and then Winter Wyvern Dazzle as the other. I mean, there aren't really many other ways that they can go unless they really want to go a little bit deep a little bit early on. I wouldn't really expect that from the Golden Boys side. They're actually taking their sweet time uh, deciding this pick, but yeah, there's only so many ways you can go. And then, you know, any hero that you don't select, I'm pretty sure, is going to be grabbed by Kaipi. Uh, probably angling towards that Dazzle. That's the one that they're going to appreciate a little bit more. But with an Undying pick, this is uh, in the opening that is just as standard, perhaps, as the heroes that I listed before, but more so on the aggressive end. Spirit Breaker also, a way that Kaipi can follow up, but, uh, you know, Queen of Pain Tusk. <clears throat> going to be the... <coughs> oh, sorry. Going to be the selections here. For the Golden Boys side. Again, these aren't heroes that necessarily work very well together, but ooh, now we have a Bane for the Kai P side. Now, uh, I'm waiting for the day where Bane's gonna go up against Witch Doctor so I can make the sickest of Batman references. You know, you, you guys know. If you just like Google, I'm, I'm sure if you would Google just Bane quotes, then you'll have like all the most dank memes you could Bane post while casting. Good times, good times, but uh, yeah, that's not going to happen, at least not yet. Kaipi grab a Bane remain. rather early. Now, this hero is definitely powerful enough, enough Five in my opinion, remain. to be considered for a first phase pick. It is uh, kind of an awkward hero to see with an Undying, perhaps. Like, you can uh, stack up a couple of zombies while they're sleeping. It's not, not really the best uh, combo in the world, but now they're looking for someone to set up for. And in that regard, uh, the Undying is most likely going to be going towards the offlane in a dual or solo lane capacity, it doesn't really matter that Dire much for him, but uh, we're going to see these setup, or the heroes that need that setup, or benefit off of that setup being banned by Golden Boys, the Ember Spirit first. For Kaipi, they're always going to have something to set up for. If you really Radiant want setup, you're going to have a Marana, right? And that's never going to be banned. But uh, as far as cores that need that setup, Slark and Ember Spirit are probably the big two. Gyrocopter, well, is, I guess, benefits from that as well, but... Uh, in, definitely in a different fashion, just so that he can walk in and land the Rocket Barrage. I guess very similar to everyone else just being wa able to walk in and uh, land the Pounce remain. or something like that. But uh, we'll see what Golden Boys are actually a little bit scared of. 
Seems like it's going to be a Huskar. Just protecting their bases, Green man. You don't want to lose a game out of nowhere because you weren't prepared for a Huskar. Can't blame him for that. Broodmother, the other hero that's big at, on that list, is also still in the pool. Might be considered for Golden Boys a little bit down the line. But for right now, it's a Slaughter pick. Now, Dive I know that pick. lots of people think that Slaughter is the nut. And I'm not going to say he's bad. I think that as a first phase pick, that's, uh, well, you are putting a lot of confidence into your Slaughter performing. Getting a fast Blink Dagger. In a second phase pick, that's where Slaughter is really at its best, in my opinion. And I'm pretty sure most people would agree, but you just can't get Slaughter that late because the enemy team is going to pick it up first if you leave it in. But uh, with a Tusk, especially for Golden Boys, they're going to have an easy way of getting him with Snowball Ten if this is a support remaining. Tusk, which is what I would expect from the Golden Boys side at this point. They can even run Tusk Slaughter remaining. in the dual off lane, and it won't be too terrible there. Add a Dazzle on top, which is still in, by the way. And you could actually have yourself a pretty sick, uh, pretty sick burst lane. You know, Bane is an okay hero at defending up against that, but you could definitely do a lot better than a Bane. In order to really counter that, you need an Earthshaker. Oh, but Kaipi gonna grab a Jakiro. So Radiant weird to see three pick. Jakiros in a row for me. I mean, it's it's not a bad hero. I think Jakiro is actually really good. I know lots of people don't. And I guess that's where I'm just, like, completely off the mark, I guess. But hey, my mark is fine, guys. Don't mess with my mark. Uh, Jakiro is, I suppose, a setup hero for this Bane, but this is really... Uh, not really going to be that payoff hero for the setup, even though Nightmare into Ice Path, yeah, it's fine. Ice Path versus Snowball actually is legit. Like, that's really good. But uh, Golden Boys, they grab a Shadow Fiend. They are ready to go in pretty early on. Blink Dagger, timing on the Slaughter, and item on the Shadow Fiend, and item on the Queen of Pain. And then they're good to go, just like that. They'll be able to ready. They'll be ready to fight, and with the Shadow Fiend Battering Ram, should be able to take down some structures. That being said, Kaipi with this Jakiro are going to have a lot of push. And whenever you do pick up a Jakiro, you're able to push. Now, whether or not the Shakira is going to be going into a farming role or if he's going to be played as more support is uh, still up in the air. Remaining. But Jakiro in a core role up against a Shadow Fiend or Queen Five of Pain, really, really bad lane for Jakiro. Uh, maybe against a Shadow Fiend, he'll have like a small window to get some CS, he's but once the Souls flower. come up on a Shadow Fiend, then it's pretty much all over. And then Kaipi will go, go ahead and grab that back. Slark. So it looks like it is going to be a, at least a Bane Slark dual lane. Maybe add another hero into that, make it a tri lane, and you're good to go. But it's definitely a super potent combo. Whether or not it's enough to actually kill off a hero like Queen of Pain before she Ten blinks out, seconds, probably not. Kaipi don't really have that much stun duration. It was looking more and more Five now like this Shakiro might be going towards mid lane just so they could get Bane on Dying Slark to the tri lane and then grab a last hero pick Reserve for Bone time. 7. But still, their flexibility Kaipi is pretty high right now, especially with the Shakiro pick. And with the Undying pick, I suppose, to a lesser extent. But Golden Boy's cores are very hard to dislodge. I mean, Shadow Fiend is, I guess, the easiest, but Slaughter will have Sprint. He'll have Tusk as backup. Queen of Pain obviously has Blink, and Kaipi really only have one real tool at disabling the Queen of Pain. It's Ice Path, and it doesn't isn't actually that good. Like, one second stun? Eh, who cares? I mean, that's like, it's like a bad fissure, right? And it also takes so long to form. Jakira just, just spit the ice already. Jeez. Just throw it out. But Disruptor's going to be banned out. Templar Assassin's going to be banned out. Radiant For Golden Boys, they do need another support hero. It is still so weird to see Dazzle still in this pool. And for Golden Boys, like, I don't actually think... is Dazzle is still in this pool, right? I'm not just, like, tripping balls and this isn't really... This is, like, Darkseer, right? This is not Dazzle in disguise. Like, it is a premium, premium pick here for Golden Boys. The only problem with the Dazzle pick, perhaps, is the fact that it doesn't do that great versus Slark. I mean, yeah, the heal is definitely nice. The grave is nice if you're going to look to keep Ten your allies alive versus remaining. the Slark. But as far as killing them off, the Dazzle doesn't really contribute that much. Five so it definitely, it definitely helps a lot versus everyone else. So if it's not going to be the Dazzle, uh, they could go for the Witch Doctor so that they could uh, you know, get some sick Bane things to bounce off of. Lich. Or a Lich. That's not Die bad either. Pick. I mean, Lich, Slard are definitely a capable dual lane. I would expect perhaps it to, uh, that to be the case. You know, Shadow Fiend perhaps a little bit more so on the roam. This is uh, going to be an interesting game here for Golden Boys. Lich is, again, not really a great hero at killing off Slark. It's not really going to be happening ever. But slowing down the Kaipi's experience gain is actually really relevant in this scenario. Jakiro needs his levels, Slark does need his levels, Ten as does the Undying. So slowing all these guys down, even if it's not by a ton, it's going to be good enough. Five and their lanes seconds, are strong remaining. enough, Golden Boys, that they don't really need a, a super powerhouse uh, late game poker to actually hold down those lanes. Time. Like Slaughter Tusk is powerful in itself. At any hero on top of that, and you're golden. Shadow Fiend, Queen of Pain, they obviously always solo their lanes, so they're obviously going to be fine uh, in most scenarios. 
you know, there are some scenarios where they just are vastly out of their depth. Like if it's like a tri lane up against Shadow Fiend or something like that, then he's screwed. But let's be honest, how often does that actually happen? And for uh, the Kai piece side, this last pick. I mean, the Templar Assassin was banned out. Seems like Golden Boys think the Undying is going to the off lane. Uh, Bane, Jakiro, Slark are going to be the tri lane. And that is, you know, a pretty a pretty decent setup. Not really sure if it's going to necessarily be enough to shut down the Slaughter to the degree where he will be an absolutely useless hero. Because if you do shut him down, Slaughter is definitely a hero that can get to that useless stage. Yeah, a little like Blink Dagger means that Golden Boys really mess up their timing. But Kaipi don't really have... I mean, they have a good amount of time to make the selection. It is really just up to them and how they want to lane this. And Golden Boys, like Shadow Fiend or Queen of Pain in the mid lane, Slardar... Or Queen of Pain off lane, I guess, seems possible, in which case Kaipi would look to have another stun, but do they really feel comfortable putting Jakiro in mid? Again, Jakiro does not have a good matchup versus Shadow Fiend or Queen of Pain. You really do want the Jakiro up against the Slaughter lane, just because that's going to be the least bad lane. But even then, it's still not that great. It's a Zeus for Kaipi. Okay. Hmm. As I take a sip of my coffee, it's getting, like, kind of like not hot anymore so it's kind of disgusting so I kind of have to drink it a lot faster but Zeus for Kaipi is not going to show us that much it is going to be that aggressive hero Kaipi are going to look for a really early mid game timing like 20 minutes ish where they're going to look to step up the pressure that's where Zeus is at his prime that's where Slark as a carry hero can contribute but uh, yeah, for Kaipi, it's going to be a pretty tough game to actually do that again Shadow Fiend Queen of Pain will have good matchups Pretty much regardless of what these uh, what these lanes look like for Kaipi, so yeah, they're going to be fine. And if you have a high level Shadow Fiend, high level Queen of Pain, you can still bring them down very quickly. They have to be very careful about their positioning. But uh, the Kaipi side will be Five really slow remaining. to actually get off the ground, and they have to get a lot of action in that 20 minute window, you know, 20 30 minute that that window area if they really want to take this game comfortably. And that's where Lich comes into play, like getting the sacrifice, slowing down the level gain for the Kaipi side. It's going to be a pain in the ass for them to deal with, but still, with such an explosive draft, it is definitely not impossible to see Kaipi, you know, win this game or have this game locked down by the 20 minute mark. Get them, you know, a, a 5,000, 7,500 gold lead, and then just ride the Slark's Shadow Blade to victory. Something along those lines. But we're, we'll see as they do load out into their lanes, guys. This is going to be game one between Golden Boys and the Radiant and Kaipi on the Dire Bone 7. Gonna be leading the charge for the Kai P side. Uh, is that all you ever do? Uh, this is Bisa on the Slark. And we got uh, following right behind him. Come with me is Jakiro. Cancel is on the Zeus over towards mid lane right now. It's Bufni on the Bane. Uh, there were properly tagged up in the lobby, for the record, guys. So, yeah, they, they were doing their job correctly. I just don't know who they are right now. But uh, everyone from Golden Boys are actually here. I don't exactly know who's who, however. Maybe next time. I know that he's here. He's on the Tusk. I know that Skylark is here. He's on the Slardar. Now, this Lich player should be Skanks. I, I would expect. I think this is Kizer from the Shadow Fiend. And Chihaya is going to be uh, on the Queen of Pain. So, yeah, unfortunately, Reborn with lobbies. Still a little bit sketch. But uh, still, it's uh, they're all here. So, if any of you are concerned about your rares being thrown, because these are not the Golden Boys that you would expect, no, they're actually all here. And it looks like we may have a Tango over the Bounty Rune up towards top lane. And come with me, he's just going to push everyone back. Bufni is here as well. Begins. Maybe next time he's not even going to test it. Slark will grab the bounty rune, and it seems like it will be similarly grabbed on the bottom lane by the Zeus. Kaipi grabbed both bounty runes. GG, next game, Golden Boys lose. No, I'm just kidding, guys, but seriously. The uh, the Golden Boys not getting any bounty runes there. And taking a quick look at these lanes, it looks like it will be Shadow Fiend in the mid lane going up against Zeus. The matchup there is perhaps a little bit better for Zeus than it would be if he was up against the Queen of Pain. Simply because the Shadow Fiend has no damage. He's actually gone for Necromastery level 1. I'm not really sure how much I agree with this. He is going to be able to get CS with this. But deny... I mean, uh, get CS. But denying his own creeps versus Zeus is very difficult because of Arc Lightning. You can see Cancel will pretty much always get those hits. Especially since Arc Lightning you would expect to be picked up at level 3. to so make it even more difficult for the Shadow Fiend. So, would have liked to see raises there instead. But uh, either way, he should be getting his souls. Should be making this lane in the end a little more even. But he just has to watch his positioning. Cancel... Once he gets like level 7-ish, Lightning Bolts will fly and Shadow Fiend, Queen of Pain, doesn't matter who it is, they're going to be in for a world of hurt. Now what the Shadow Fiend does have going for him is the fact that he has Tusk right behind him and Zeus is super immobile. 295 movement speed, not you know too bad, but Shard Snowball and Shadow Fiend with a couple of raises can very easily kill off that little dwarf guy. Thunder God or not, it's not going to be super clean for him. 
Now, bottom lane is going to be Queen of Pain, forced to go for Blink level 1. Not Obviously, never really what you want to be doing. But it's a necessity up against the, the uh, Undying. Because if you get decayed just a couple times, you can see already she's at 300 HP. They're going to shard up, come with me. Land a couple right clicks. She has also here, but Bonesub is going to get a big soul rip. Keep come with me, very healthy. And Chihaya will be uh, have to will have to be very careful in the in this lane, because again, if you get hit with a random ice path, if you get hit with a dual breath liquid fire after getting decayed down to like 300 HP, yeah, it, it's rough times for the Quap, and her CS isn't coming up at all right now. But it is also a lane where Kai P have to be careful with the Jakiro. He is very tanky, has a solar behind him. But Queen of Pain, with a little bit of help, can very easily poke down the Shikiro, at least to a point where Shikiro is going to be needing to leave the lane to go back to the base or something like that, or ferry out more regen or something. But overall, this bottom lane you would expect to be dominated by Kai P's side, keeping the Queen of Pain out of CS range. I mean, that's good enough. She does do decently with just experience, but really, you want to get both. Shihaya is fighting evenly with Bone Zone right now, but look at how much damage that Decay did. That's just a disgusting amount of damage for a spell like Gauze 70. Now the Dual Breath macro and the uh, Liquid Fire... Like, it's only level 1 a piece, I think. Yeah, it is. But look at the damage output because of the lack of strength in the Queen of Pain. Now, she'll salve up. That'll bring her all the way back up to full. But still, this is going to be rough times ahead for the Queen of Pain. Mid lane's being won by it without me right now. Looks like uh, Shadow Fiend's having a great time. Towards top lane, Lich and the Slardar. Might get jumped by the Slark? No. Uh, Bufni, unfortunately. Shadow's not his ally right now. He's completely spotted by the Subserver Ward. And he has to be careful because this is a dangerous lane because of this reason. Crush is available. They'll crush up the Bane immediately. Frost Blast has already been used. The Slark hoping to drive everyone away will instead pounce onto the Lich. But now Bufni is under a lot of pressure right now. He'll just drop to Skylark. And Slark, he'll try to kill off the Lich. That's not going to happen because of the Ice Armor. It's not that much only being level 1, but it's enough so that the Slark's damage output, at least with his right clicks, remain almost completely irrelevant. Slark doing what he can. What he can do is not that much. And unfortunately for the Bane... Uh, his body broke first. 0-1-0 zero, zero on the Bane. That is, you know, pretty much just what happens when you run this Lich and Slaughter lane. Now, they're up against two heroes, and if they were up against three heroes, they probably couldn't have gotten away with that. Now, that being said, the Slaughter, uh, because he is in a situation where it's 2v2 with a Lich, should be winning this lane, mostly because of Sacrifice, but also because of the fact that Ice Armor is going to be just brick wall them. Oh, Bone7 getting into a fist fight with the un Undying, with the uh, Tusk, rather, and the Queen of Pain. He doesn't have any more skills left, and we'll just fall to the shards and the shadow strike. Kaipi losing two heroes now across the map. In this bottom lane, it could accept a couple of deaths since the Undying is still getting a lot more farm than the Quap, but he definitely has to be very careful about giving one too many over. And two nil right now for the Golden Boys. In this top lane, you would expect to continue to dominate for the uh, for the Golden Boys side. The experience just not there for the Bane to level up as comfortably as he would like. Jihaya is looking for the regen rune cancel is here, however. Blink from the Queen of Pain is not available. She walk right into the ice path. Lightning Bolt is going to fly. Needs one more hit. Dual Breath should get the kill. Ooh, it's actually, yes, going to get the kill. But now here comes the Shadow Fiend. Has two people in the corner. Come with me. Going to try to get denied to the Roshan. That's not going to happen. Cancel now. Going to try. That's also not going to happen. And how is there so many Radiant Creeps here? Where are these creeps coming from? Like, what happened? How did they all get there? I don't know. But Queen of Pain is going to fall, yes. But Shadow Fiend comes in. Grabs two kills, of course, uh, with a little bit of help from maybe next time. And it's going to be Shadow Fiend getting even more acceleration. Now, he's already having a decent time versus the Zeus. The Zeus's levels not really coming up fast enough to the point where he can significantly pressure the Shadow Fiend's life. That will be coming up a little bit later. You can do stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot of free damage, of course, and Shadow Fiend can't really easily return fire. But Shadow Fiend getting, first of all, level 6, so level 3 raises are up. Getting now the Magic Wand, so spam of Arc Lightning, though it will still hurt the Shadow Fiend is going to be mitigated somewhat. And without me, should be perfectly fine in this lane. And he is mm, working with a little couple stacks as well. One, two, three, four? Is it? Uh, yeah, four stacks there. Not a bad amount. Oh, Queen of Pain. My bad, guys. My bad. Everyone everyone gets one, right? That's my one. I won't miss any more, I promise. Surprise to the Queen of Pain. Level six is up on the Zeus. Helping to jam that kill home up towards top lane. In the meantime, Skylark... Skanks, they're looking for eh, the Bane if they can. But unfortunately, there's... Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, there's no chance that this camp gets blocked out. They're just sentry to hell and back for KP. They're going to rotate a couple heroes here, actually. Nightmare onto the Slardar. Now, here comes the Slark. This is the setup that I was talking about earlier. But up against the Slardar, they need more damage if they're really going to easily get this kill. Ooh, one hit away from death. Skylark's going to walk right to come with me. <laughs> 
suddenly dragons. In the meantime, Zeus intercepts the Lich. Lightning Bolt has already been used. Curry is going to give Zeus a soul ring, so he'll have, he'll have more than enough mana. For the Lich, the best case scenario here is denying himself to the neutrals. I don't think anything else is really going to fly. Oh, that's not going to happen either. Can't run from heaven, bitch. Lich is going to fall, and Zeus was only uh, level 2 bolt with that, actually. Not even doing the most with that, but still, a kill is a kill, and that's going to tie up the score here for Kaipi. Now, they do rotate a whole bunch of heroes up towards that north area. Completely worth it. The Slardar uh, I mean, is very, very tanky, very difficult to bring down, but with that setup, it is a lot of damage. Pack does actually uh, pretty much an average amount of damage for any given spell, but land a pounce, land the full duration nightmare as well. It definitely does add up, and especially if the Slaughter is sprinted, which he shouldn't be, then he might uh, just you know, be in a rough position, and that's in a position that you can't really escape from, even though you may have sprint. However, he's going to run to come with me. Now, this is a good position for Skylark. Liquid Fire is going to slow down his damage output by a lot, but the Frost Blast, come with me, is going to need some help here. Snowball, that's not help for come with me. That's help for the Radiant side. Come with me is going to get beaten down. And Jakiro, uh, looking for a wraparound, I suppose, like with the Nightmare setup, they could have gotten any one hero that's defending this top lane, but, you know, <laughs> suddenly fish is everywhere. Now Slaughter is going to team up with the Tusk, and this is the combo that uh, Golden Boys decided not to lane together, but in the mid game is still super effective, especially if you're going to go towards someone like a Zeus. You just snowball in for a crush. Skylark doesn't look like he has a Blink Dagger, but the Blink Dagger is the Tusk, and now here it comes. Slow Blink in, cancel. Is going to hit with the crush, one raise is going to land, two raise is going to land. That's Zeus to fall. Very easy gank there from the Golden Boy's side. And for an offlane Slaughter, I mean, you'd expect him to occasionally leave the lane if he's having a really tough time, but if I was Kai P, I wouldn't expect the Slaughter to leave, actually. Like, I would expect him to stick around because he's still getting a lot of experience up at this top lane. So maybe they just weren't prepared for that. But along the same line, Skylark is a hero that is able to do that. And now is level 6, so Amplified Damage is up. Which guy with the Slark can purge off. In fact, they're going to do a lot of damage to Skylark right now. The Crush will land onto the Slark. Skylark's still going for Boofney, however. Bane. Oh, the Darkness is not his ally now. It's just daytime. It breaks. Skylark's going to come up with the Crush, although Cancel is here. He's going to drop his ultimate. Will do a lot of damage without me, but that's about all he does. They bring down the Lich, but that's not really good enough. Now the Requiem is going to land. Not really doing a ton of damage. The Slark is in a corner right now. He's going to fight up against Skylark. Looks like the Fishes will kill off the one another. Oh, Shadowfiend will get the kill there, but Undying will kill off the Slaughter. Then Tusk will shortly fall after. Zeus with the Lightning damage doing a hell of a lot. But 8-7, to seven, Golden Boys. Yeah, this this one was a slightly better trade for Kaipi. Just getting one more kill, so numerically it is fine for them. And that being said, Kaipi have the type of draft where they need to be doing a lot better than this if they're going to be comfortably moving into their timing push. I mean, now Come With Me is going to have a free lane to get a couple of levels. He can't really pressure the Queen of Pain that much, though he will be able to pressure her tower. The uh, Kaipi side really need to make sure that the Slark stays alive. Get his Shadow Blade and or Blink Dagger or really any farm. They could try to shift gears, I suppose, into a late game with Hand of Midas, but that's really something that they would rather like to avoid if they can't help it. 8-7, to seven. now we have Come With Me in a little bit of trouble. Skylark has arrived. Sprint is not up just yet. They do have a blink. Scream Sonic Wave. That shouldn't be enough to kill Come With Me regardless. Especially with the Crush landing. However, here comes the lightning damage. Skylark is sprinting right now. So much damage onto this fish. They'll lose the Jakiro, but now Chihaya is in the trees. With a bolt, they'll snag the kill with Cancel. Has another bolt in just a few seconds. Skylark has got to be very careful right now. Especially since Bone 7 is also here. One for one trade. Not a great trade there for Golden Boys. This Jakiro is fully expendable for the Kaipi side if it means getting even trades onto someone like a Queen of Pain. Tower is under attack. 9 to 8, and Kai P, they're uh, trading evenly for the most part. You can see the Shadow Fiend still leading in net worth. He's going to be the toughest hero to bring down, especially since, since his mech is right around the corner. But it looks like Golden Boy is going to go for Bone 7 first. Now, this may end up biting the Golden Boys if there's TP support here for Bone 7. Tombstone is dropped right now. Decay, not going to be used just yet. And in fact, he will not be able to get it off at all. He's going to get perfectly chained on. Oh, now Decay is there, plus a Soul Rip. Tombstone will be focused down. Scarlet will survive. Bolt over onto Lich will kill him off. And that's what I'm talking about, man. Going for after an Undying like that might bite you. Ooh, uh, Shadow Fiend's going to get put to sleep. Sonic Wave thrown to Bone 7 will annihilate the Undying. But now without me, he's going to fall. They can't lose the Shadow Fiend ever, Golden Boys. They'll take it on the Bane and even trade. Now Skylark's going to chase forward to Cancel. Shard's going to push him out, actually. Man on Cancel's there for a Lightning Bolt. Kill off the Slardar. And Cancel will fall afterwards, but now Chihaya's stuck in a corner. Ice Path is there. Teleportation cancelled, however. Now Chihaya's just going to turn around and go for Come With Me. Earn Charge. Right clicks. Jakiro has no more regen right now. Blink Scream. Chihaya's going to grab an Ultra Kill off of it. Ultra Kill. That's a huge exchange. Very surprised to see the, Slard the Slark not teleport down to that bottom lane. That was definitely his TP. It was definitely his cancellation. Yet, uh, after all is said and done, he probably could have cleaned up Queen of Pain, especially after that blink, and if not that, he could have at least saved his Jakiro buddy. 
I mean, Slark gets a little bit of farm at the top lane, but an ultra kill for the Queen of Pain is essentially, for Golden Boys, putting the net worth from the Shadow Fiend, transferring that to the Queen of Pain. And that's not necessarily, like, better or worse for them, it's just what happened. Uh, Shadow Fiend is still working with a hell of a lot, and once he has his mech, he'll be able to make those plays and probably get away with it. The Queen of Pain definitely needs that additional edge. Now she has Power Treads, now she's actually going to go straight for BKB. It again is never really the build you want to be going for as Queen of Pain. You want to be able to uh, go for an Orchid, an Aghanim Scepter, you know, items along those lines. But you know the pressure is going to be coming fast, so you might as well prepare for it. They're going to snowball in towards Cancel right now. It's just the Tusk. Walrus Punch is there. Thunder God's Wrath Bolt is going to kill the Tusk. Chai is going to come in. However, he's going to get fogged. Cancel with the sickest of jukes. Has another Lightning Bolt. Chai has got to be really careful right now. Lightning Bolt to fly. Arc Lightning as well. And now the Queen of Pain forced to blink out. Cancel with full vision, of course, being granted by the Lightning Bolt. And of course, Thunder God's Wrath beforehand is going to get a free kill. Really just room service delivery there for Cancel. Snowballing into a Zeus? Good idea. Snowballing into a Zeus with just Tusk? Maybe not as much so. Bottom Tower will be destroyed by Kaipi in the meantime. Jakiro Liquid Fire level 4 enables him to now rotate around into probably all the other lanes that you know, bring those towers down. Bone 7, he's shown himself to be very tanky. And the Tombstone level 4 with the Flesh Golem is a significant, significant threat here for Golden Boys. If they don't focus that down, they may just end up losing a fight because of it. But now Bufni. Bane? Looking for without me. Radiance middle tower is and I wonder, attack. Shadow Fiend, will he actually get caught by this? Because if he just Dyer's gets it with a grip, the follow-up from Kaipi, though it is far away, it probably will be enough to just kill off that Shadow Fiend. But Golden Boys, they're in the mid lane in force. The Slaughter doesn't really want to be fighting right now. 1200 gold towards his Blink Dagger. Dying now is the last thing that Scarlock wants to do. He run down to the bottom lane, and it looks like he may be intercepted by Bufni. And Bufni has the Jakiro right nearby, but uh, with Slaughter having so much support, that's not really going to happen. In fact, everyone here on the Golden Boy side in the bottom half of the map, Illusion from Zeus is going to not see this one coming. They're going to dive forward, looking for Come With Me. Do they have a Walrus Punch? They do not. I thought they did. They're going to try to snowball instead, but in the meantime, it's Boofy to get caught in the middle of everything. He gets a Brain Sap onto the Lich. Now he's going to try to book it. He takes a long range raise. Chain Frost, not in range. Raise, also not in range. However, here comes the Queen of Pain. Sonic Wave will get the kill. And Bane would have probably gotten sniped by the Shards, if not for the Sonic Wave. But for Kaipi, they only lose one hero. Slark getting a lot of free farm towards the top lane is that much closer to his Shadow Blade. Ultimately, for Kaipi, that's actually not too bad of a trade. Like, if the Slark had his Shadow Blade, obviously that would be a lot better. But uh, yeah, getting this item on Slark is actually going to enable him to join these fights. Oh, lightning damage over towards mid without me. Oh, he's going to take a lot of damage, but he'll be fine. Alright, so Slark, yeah going to be going for his Shadow Blade. Once he has that, then it should be, you know, that 20 minute timing I was talking about for Kaipi. Looking to rotate around. At the very least, take all the towers, but Skylark, what's going to break first? Your mind or your body? With the Macro Pyre there, I'm, I'm going to assume it's his body right now. Ice Pass is follow up. Brain Sap available if needed, not even so. Slaughter to fall. It's going to be a very easy kill. Bane is going to claim his first victim. And again, this is not the timing that uh, Golden Boys want to lose their Slaughter. His Blink Dagger, his having the Blink Dagger, is going to be just the most essential thing for Gold Boys to continuously take these fights come that 20 minute timing mark. If they don't have that, initiating is going to be damn near impossible, and Slaughter's effectiveness therefore is going to absolutely plummet. So if they lose him again, I mean, losing him once is already bad enough, but losing him again is just a complete Dyer's disaster. Is under attack. The bottom lane is going to continuously be pushed by Come With Me and Bone 7. Now this is something that can be punished for Golden Boys. Although Bufni is also here. 3v2, Ice Path gonna catch maybe next time. Undying now gonna jump Tombstone. Thunder God's Wrath to snipe the kill from downtown. Chain Frost is out, will not do jack all, although Bone is gonna stick near his Tombstone. He will get dropped by the Shadow Fiend. Chain Frost still bouncing, Tombstone will be cleaned up. This does force three TPs, however, so it's a super expensive uh, kill there for the Golden Boy's side. And yeah, I guess they do get that kill, and that's kind of nice, but uh, I'm not really sure if that's necessarily good enough for the Golden Boy's side at this stage. to 14 right now and Kai P shadow blade status up so we'll see how much uh, Beast actually is able to get done with this Slark seems like he's gonna go for the double invis strats shadow blade and smoke can't see him yet and shadow dance so he's so many layers of invis and the person who might feel it first is Skylark just happily farming away for his blink dagger yet suddenly million heroes Skylark is just gonna get pecked down by this Slark 
so weird to have someone Skylark and Slark in the same game when they're being played by different people. So yeah, I'm sorry if I stumble on that one, guys. It's kind of hard. But Boofney's going to claim that kill. Very easily done again. Point, click, grip. No one to interrupt. For Golden Boys, they do have Chain Frost and Ice and a Snowball and, I guess, Walrus Punch to interrupt. I guess also Crush, you know, depending on who's getting gripped. But uh, yeah, for Boofney, it looks like he should be able to get his grip off for the most part every single time. It's uh, going to be a very good game, actually, for this Bane. 1 4 4 is, is, not, is not bad. It's not good either, but uh, yeah, Bane, just with that brain sap now, is, is a really significant threat, especially since he could team up with the Slark every, every single time and just get those kills as they rotate around. And while they're rotating around, it's of course forcing Golden Boys to you know, kind of have reinforcements there, have TPs. And well, while they're TPing around, while they're trying to deal with this combo, the Jakiro is just, you know, gonna slide in the back, just, you know, drop a couple of liquid fire hits onto the tower. Casually drop it down to 190 HP. Here we go. Let's see if the Jakiro can actually take this tower without punishment. The Queen of Pain is big enough to put a lot of damage to the come with me. Jakiro, I don't think it's uh, big enough Queen of Pain to kill off the dragon. But she's sure as hell going to try. Liquid Fire is going to kill off the tower now. Ice Path going to connect onto maybe next time. He's teleporting in. Dual Breath is there. Jakiro will take out the tower now. He has help from Cancel. Thunderbolt on Shihaya doesn't have his ultimate just yet. And the Queen of Pain will blink out. Come with me. Will eventually fall. But it looks like maybe next time is going to fall as well with one more bolt. That should do it. Nope, one more bolt arc. Still not going to do it. 13 HP. The Tusk lives. Now blink back in with the Sonic Wave. Cancel four staff out. And he will survive that. Jakiro is the only casualty, but they do get their tower. Training Jakiro for that tower is not bad. Thunder God's Wrath from the Zeus. Who, unfortunately, not quite going to be enough damage to kill off the Tusk nor Queen of Pain. They will both slip away. But it is Kaipi to give up another kill. Did I just hear Slark? Okay, yeah, I did hear a Slark, but it wasn't on a hero. thought I heard his pounce. I, uh, I must be crazy. I, I, there's a high chance, guys, that I'm just crazy. In which case, send help. But Bone7, he's just going to shift over to the mid lane now. Of course, wherever the, wherever the Jakiro goes, that's where the battering ram is going to be. That's where the Liquid Fire is going to do the damage. And Kaibi can choose to either split push, look for picks, or just uh, take those fights. And Slark, oh, looks like he found two of them. Now these two, two heroes do not know they're being stalked right now. They drop a sentry, so they will be able to see him. Now they do see him. And Slark, oh, he's going to actually pack out first. He will get rid of the Amplify damage. They're going to jump right onto the Lich right now. Chain Frosty bounce to annihilate the Slark. That's a one kill for one so far. Boofney, well, the Tombstone is already dropped. They have to protect it right now. There is the grip onto Skylark. What breaks first, Skylark, your mind or your body? And it looks like he will just get put down immediately. Maybe next time he's going to lay some pretty good shards out. That'll protect him. But still a two for one in favor of the KP side. Now they're just going to go clean up this tower. Jihaya is going to pull out the creep wave, but there is no backdoor protection for tier 1s. And it's going to be a 2 for 1 after all is said and done. Now, it's not the best 2 for 1. Losing their Slark is a really, really huge deal for the Kaipi side since the Slark is... I mean, he's super fragile. We just saw he just got 100 to 0 pretty much by that Lich Chain Frost. Even though he did get Shadow Dance out, it seems, that didn't really do enough for him. Uh, he needs some sort of health item, and usually that's going to be uh, Sanjin Yasha or IF Scotty. In this game, SNY seems... Pretty reasonable as far as keeping up the pressure up towards top, though. Bone 7. He's getting a little bit of help from Cancel, but it seems like uh, well, there's no chance of them killing off the Queen of Pain. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Just blink away. Tusk in the meantime is going to kill off Bane. Uh, okay. Well, that happened, I guess. Sorry, guys. I guess I get two, right? Mid lane tower is going to fall without me. He's going to drop that super quickly. Dyer's Bottom lane in the meantime, come with me. Also in a lot of trouble. No blink dagger needed. Shy of wandering around getting these free pick offs. KB, they do have the power to split push, of course, but uh, you know, doing it a little bit on a, too much of a solo basis, and they have costing them just a couple kills. Got a bloodstone coming up on Zeus. I don't really know if Kaipi are getting enough done right now. Yeah, they really have to be snowballing hard off of this Slark and Zeus pick. And Zeus is doing really well for himself, but naturally this hero is going to fall off. Right now is his prime. Kaipi have to like, you know, start to stem the bleeding and start to be a little more aggressive right now. But it's gonna be that much harder since Slaughter now has his blink dagger. Like just a blink crush is gonna jam up their entire combo. Boofney's grip suddenly not as useful. I mean, it's still good, of course, especially if you grip the slaughter, but I don't really know if Bane is gonna be able to uh get his grip off as comfortably as he would really like. 
Hypey need a big team fight that goes their way. They need to open up the fight with like a grip on the Shadow Fiend, but he has BKB at this point, 10 seconds. Queen of Pain should also have 10 seconds on hers, and she does. Yeah, so this is a lot of defensive power from the Golden Boy's side, and the physical damage from Kaipi is really not that high. And their damage that goes through BKB is just pretty much just the Slark. And that's fine, I guess, but Slark is going to go for... Uh, he has to worry about his HP whenever the BKBs are popped, because when BKBs are popped, that means Requiem and Sonic Wave are coming. And for Slark, that, that might be a little bit too much. Got a big smoke up from here from Kaipi. It looks like they won't really find anyone here. Uh, the issue is being forced up towards top. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Easy tower destruction, probably. Although they're going to intercept Skylark right now. Decay is there, plus the pounce to land. Skylark does have a lot of backup. Sentries galore. Tombstone's dropped, but the ultimate's going towards Slark will not kill him off. He'll be able to get into Shadow Dance. Now the grip onto the Shadow Fiend. They can't even see the Bane right now, so he won't be able to cancel this one without me. Needs to get his mech off at least, but he won't be able to. They'll lose the Slark in the process. Chain Frost still bouncing, but now it's going to be uh, come with me, tracing forward for maybe next time. Bone 7, kind of weak. We'll be able to soar it. We'll be fine. That ice path is nowhere near landing. They know exactly where the enemies are right now. Cancel. Oh, he's walled off. I don't know why he thought he could go through there. Uh, can he go through here? I think he might be able to, but can't, couldn't actually slip through. Huge place for Bufni there. The positioning on the Bane was absolutely perfect. Like, it actually just doesn't get better than that. Get a perfect angle on the Shadow Fiend and get it at the proper timing where Shadow Fiend is, you know, ready to pop his BKB and eager to pop his BKB, yet hasn't popped his BKB, so they're able to put in the damage from the Jakiro into the Shadow Fiend. Involving level 2 Macro Pyre is a lot of damage if you can keep him there, and Grip is a pretty good tool at keeping a hero in one spot. Yeah, they lose their Slark again, but for, still for Kaipi to take down the Shadow Fiend, that's a pretty big one. Only question is, is that good enough? Because they might lose Kamafi in response right now. Gets bashed even. Snowball in, Walrus Punch to get the kill. Jakiro going sky high right now, and well, that's uh, going to mitigate the effectiveness of that last fight. And Golden Boy's yeah, losing their Shadow Fiend is bad, but he's still on top of the net worth chart. And still is probably probably like the most dominant late game here in this game. The Slark needs to survive these team fights for Kaipi to actually, you know, chase down for those additional kills. But not only that, like actually have a chance at surviving the late game. Because Slardar has that blink crush. We saw how effective it was just now at killing off the Jakiro. Uh, down the line, he's gonna be probably going for a BKB of his own. I mean, that's not really a huge offensive item for him, but just the fact that he is going to be able to provide cover for the Queen of Pain and Shadow Fiend to do their things means that Skylark will be able to probably survive afterwards, and even if he doesn't, like, it's not a big deal. He has his job right now. Your job is to Blink Crush. That's it. How does it feel, Slaughter? I guess Amplified Damage also. <laughs> I, mean, that's, I think Amplified Damage is a pretty good spell. Seems good. Minus 15 armor. A little bit more from Presence of the Dark Lord. Now they have a pretty good Dyer's angle right now. Frozen tower. Sigil is going to look attack. to scout the trees. Bone Seven's on the front lines. Got to be really careful. There's a Blink Crush. Bone Seven's in a little bit of trouble. There's a Blink in. Sonic Wave not even needed. Bone Seven already down. And the BKB pop on everyone. Mitigating the Zeus' damage down to nothing. They'll pop the Requiem. Maybe next time we'll slip into the trees right now. Slark going to give chase. Sonic Wave now going to fly through. On to cancel. Oh, the grip is there from Boofney. But the question is, Boofney, will you survive this with Shadow Fiend's working him down? Chaya will die in the end. Boofney, now with the Nightmare, might actually live, though Skylark is hot in his trail. They have a crush. Well, there's a brain sap first. Boofney, if I amp you, will you die? It looks like it'll be extremely painful. Without me, will in the end fall as Slark has returned to this fight. Getting a little bit of time to regenerate now. He's going to chase forward for this Lich. Should be able to jam this kill home, although the Ancients will get the kill in the end. Slark now is sucking the Ancients. He's got to help out the Zeus is being chased down by Skylark. You cannot juke when you're Amplified Damage. And now Skylark, he's going to have to try to juke. Lightning is going to spot him out first. And with one more shot, Slark is going to get the kill. 24 to 24, and we have an even game, ladies and gentlemen. That's the SMY completed on the Slark. Slark and Zeus, the two most important heroes for Kaipi to keep alive, were kept alive. And they do take a hell of a lot in that engagement. That being said, they really do need to get some late game items up if they're going to start to make that transition. Because it is starting to get to that point where looking to end the game by the 30 minute mark is off the table for Kaipi. They have to look into the uh, little bit more of a skirmishy team fight build. Hopefully for Bufni, he can keep getting those uh, grips off. Because man, Bufni has been just overperforming on this Bane. Like, not only gripping all the time, but always gripping a really high-priority target all the time. Haste. It's been like Shadow Fiend twice, then Queen of Pain once. And Shadow Fiend's damage not enough to kill off that Bane. Kai going to jump right into the Roche Pit right now. A big item that they can grab that'll help accelerate them, or, you know, keep them afloat in the late game is Aghanim Septron and Dying. Gets you 10 strength per Decay cast. And, oh, they need to not lose Cancel here. What you doing here, Zeus? Like, what? You should be over here. 
Like, I'm not really sure what Zeus was doing there, but he's going to give up his life. And now, here we go. Shard's going to fly, catch everyone. Tombstone up at the high ground. Yule Scepter set up onto the tusk right now. Pounce in from the Slark. He should probably get a snowball off, but he will probably die immediately afterwards. He'll sigil, and Boofy now going to grip a child. This time, though, Boofy is going to be amped up and will be dropped. Two for one so far. Slark going to look to the back line. He's going to jump onto the Lich right now. If he can force the high ground, then that'll mean that this Chain Frost is super ineffective. Well, the Chain Frost actually already been used. Sonic Wave, not available just yet. They'll get the crush into Bone 7. Jump right over. Tombstone still at the high ground right now. Bone 7, though, in the middle of everything, is not going to get much help from the Jakiro. Drops the Magra Pyre and Ice Pop, but completely botches it. Cancel's now going to return the fight. Tries to get for the Queen of Pain. He won't fall short there. Now with the Shadow Fiend on his tail, he'll interrupt the TP out from Skylark. Yeah, but he'll die shortly after. And Slark, looks like he's going to stay still. Consider going for the chase. Will not. It's going to be a two for three, this time in favor of Golden Boys. Kaipi with the Jakiro's minus attack, he will still go right back into the Roche Pit. They'll try to finish this up, but now they're going to look for Skylark instead. You will step to set up with the Ice Path is there. Hit, pounce, it's all there for Skylark, and he will fall. 3-9-13 now on this Slardar. I don't really know what the plan was there, like being alone as Slardar ever is really not a good idea. And, well, especially going into the Slark is an even worse idea. It looks like this Slark is going to be able to grab this Aegis, no problem whatsoever. It does cost Kaipi a hell of a lot. That is an expensive Aegis for this Slark, but we have seen Slark get insta gibbed before. And now that's just not going to happen. It will happen once, maybe. But happening twice, probably not going to happen right now for the Slark. Especially since he is going to go ahead for that ultimate orb item. Mm, it probably is just going to be an Eye of Scotty. You, whenever you see it on the Slark, you got to consider his Mantis style actually good. And it does get rid of Amplify Damage, so I guess it's not bad. Mm, he already has the Yasha. I guess he can go for that and just hold the Sanj. That's actually not terrible. I wouldn't mind that that much. Oh, Bane, though. That if I Sonic Wave perfect. you, will you die? It'll be extremely painful. I'll just let that sink in. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I really can't resist. I really can't resist doing that. Like, I just, I just can't. Now, I don't know all the best quotes, but I know enough. Jahaya's going to get jumped by the Slark. He's a blink out, though. Until you get a Basher Slark, that's just not going to happen. Basher's going to be happening after the Ultimate Orb item, obviously. Oh, the Ultimate Orb for value, and then Basher afterwards. That's not the worst in the world. Up towards top lane, though, Slaughter. He has that Blink Crush, and he sees a zombie. Gotta go for the headshots. Blink in. There's the Amplified Damage. Tombstone coming in. Falcon Punch doing a hell of a lot of damage to Amp up. Bone 7 even getting it with Chain Frost drawn out. Okay, I'm not really sure if that was completely necessary for the Lich, but... Autumn. They definitely got that undying. Slowing down that slowing down that Aghanim Scepter as best they can. Again, that'll keep the undying relevant in the later stages of the game, if you can get it up fast enough. You know, like 40 minutes, that's that's fine. Like, pretty much no matter when you get it, it's fine. It just uh, requires the fights to go long. The fights haven't really been super long. Come with me. Oh, no. Spotted by the Sigil. Ooh, looks like he will actually get away. No aggressive play here from Golden Boys. Come with me. Now trying to bait. But it might bait one too many heroes because the Shadow Feet incoming with the double damage rune cancel. You can throw a lightning bolt with then four staff away. He's gotta be really careful because he knows that slaughter is right around the corner. Careful, cancel, careful. And Zeus has a lot of damage output right now. If he can get the fights to be elongated. And again, that's what Kaipi really are looking for right now. Take a super long fight. That's where Slark is able to get some regen in between the kills. That's where the Jakiro's damage, especially with liquid fire, is gonna add up, and Zeus, of course. At this point, is not going to be doing that much more damage, really. Uh, it just Radiant really needs the fight to elongate so that he can drop more lightning bolts and more arc lightnings. For Golden Boys, they're taking these fights pretty decisively, it seems. Disengage Radiant's for Kaipi is going to be so important. Disengage and whatever heal they have, that's why we have a glimmer cape on Bane. Would like to see more four stabs on Kaipi if at all possible. Or blink daggers, really just any item to get away from the uh, BKBs of Golden Boys and to try to draw Golden Boys a little bit further out once they pop their BKBs. You know, get cancelled throwing out those uh, Arc Lightnings, get those Static Field procs. 9% health is no joke. Going up high ground though for Kaipina. This is possible because of Jakiro. It's kind of risky, though they do have the Aegis on the Slark. They're not going to do a ton of damage into this tower. It is Ice Armored up from the Lich. Snowball in. Oh, that's actually onto a range creep. Never mind. Just going to try to scare him. Bluff called though. Split push is there, Blink Crush. He's got to take a Lightning Bolt for his troubles. And Slark, he only has his uh, passive to rely on. There's no extra sustain here, no urn or anything like that. And Slark, 
Well, he will pounce away, get rid of the Amplify damage, go in Viz. We'll get out to full soon, but the, snow, the Tombstone's being beaten down, 150 gold for Chihaya. As they're looking to go back in, Blink Crush on the cancel right now. Can they jump on the Zeus? Seems like they can't. Slark in the middle of everything. We'll get Soul Rift, he'll be fine. Ice Path gonna miss completely. Chain Frost now out, is gonna bounce down to Bone 7. Only one bounce now, Thunder God's Wrath is there. They'll lose the Aegis on the Slark, but they can still continue this fight, because that's what the Aegis is for, that's what Liquid Fire is for. And Golden Boys, they're not really healthy right now, so they have to go back in the fountain and heal up for a couple more seconds. Chaya's gonna come back out, has a Sonic Wave, that's about all he has. Looking for the Slark, obviously he can jump to the back line. Sonic Wave only has come with me, however, and now the grip on the Skylark! No one's interrupting it just yet, but we get the Orchid finally. No one's not dead on the Kaipi side, Snowball in towards Cancel. He jumps up to the high ground, looks like they're gonna bring Skylark with him. Cancel in a little bit of trouble in the meantime, Chaya also being Magrapire, will fall, come with me. Is going to get away, actually, because of Bukni's Nightmare, perfect in time. Cancelled map fighting up against the Tusk. She'll be able to get that kill eventually with the Lightning Bolts and the Arc Lightning. Slark is back in. He's going to jump towards the Lich. Kill him off in an instant. Now onto the Shadow Fiend they're going to try to go. In the meantime, Cancel does win that duel. He's able to return now. Help out the rest of the team. Kill off the Shadow Fiend. Blink forward from Chaya. Going to look for Cancel. Will fall short there. The Zeus way too tanky apparently. Now Slark's going to pack off the Orchid. Get right on top of this Queen of Pain. But without me, he's in the front lines. He'll die in immediate. See? And now the Zeus, he dies, but he ends up healing everyone else because he has a Bloodstone. The Queen of Pain needs to blink out like right now, but it doesn't seem oh, she will get away. Radiant She's spotted by a creep. Come with me is gonna look to get this kill, but I don't think he has enough. But the Shadow Fiend is down with no buyback. That death on the Zeus was absolutely huge. That enables Kai to actually elongate that fight, but also that fight was so long to start off with. Like, it started over here, it lasted for an Aegis, it got all the way back here, there was a fight over here, there was a fight over here, and that's exactly what Kai wants. Blink 4 from Skylar, can land a crush on a 2. Chaya does not have a Sonic Wave, however, he's gonna try to go for Come With Me. I don't think he has enough to go for that one. Everyone and their mom's gonna TP out. Walrus Punch is gonna kill off the Jakiro, and now Slark is on the run, Shards will not connect. He doesn't have a ton of mana, but he should have enough to get out of here, especially with the Shadow Blade. He'll get up to full HP, and looks like Scarlet won't be able to amp him up in time. Now, this is Melee Rax is taken by the Kaipi side. I was not expecting that push to be that successful. That was a, a sheer yeah. and simple win there for the Kaipi side. I don't really think there's uh, there's any two ways about it. 32 to 31, and Kaipi now are going to grab their next volley of items. Looks like we have a Sheep Stick being built up on Zeus. Looks like we have an Eye of Scotty now done on the Slark. Is there an Ags yet on the Undying? Not quite yet for Bone 7. But he should have that one by the time Kaipi are willing to go for their next push. And four stabs galore. I like to see this. I hope this four, this uh, Staff of Wizardry for the Bane is going to be turning into a four staff. Just to get themselves out of the fight. Just to try to disengage from Golden Boys. Elongate the fight, guys. It's what it's all about. Of course, the Aegis. <laughs> sure as hell helped. Up towards top lane, though. Bone 7. Do -do 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 -do. Just farming. Skylark. And maybe next time. This time, don't really want to test the Undying. It is a trap, of course. Bufni is right behind him. Surprise Banes. Bone 7 still baiting right now, but it seems like the Tusk isn't biting. Bufni. Oh, he's actually going to see him. Random Tusk is here. Tusk has got to blink out. He will get over towards the lane before the Thunder God's Wrath lands. I like that play from Kaipi. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit too late. They could have gotten the kill otherwise. They canceled the blink dagger with the ultimate. Bufni charging forward, looking for a grip. And that's really why you need a force staff on the Bane, or at least a, or a blink dagger. Either one will do fine. But hey, it's uh, Thunder God's Wrath used. You could call that a Vision Wrath, no big deal. Tower is going to take a slow push, here comes Liquid Fire. And it doesn't seem like Golden Boys should really want to defend this. But now we have the Aghanim Scepter on the Undying. I don't really think there are any huge items worth waiting for. I mean, Sheepstick is definitely an item that's good, but it's so far away that it's not really worth waiting for necessarily. Blink Crush going to completely whiff. Come with me in the front lines for some reason. going to land the Yule Scepter onto the Shadow Fiend right now. However, he's going to get his BKB, taking zero damage at all from this Jakiro. In the meantime, Slark going to try to go for Skylark. Looks like he's going to get crushed up. Now grip on it without me. Someone needs to interrupt this. Someone needs to interrupt it right now. Snowball is there, which will cancel it, but the zombie is still stacking up. In the meantime, they're losing Slark. Uh, Slaughter, rather, Requiem in the middle of everyone will kill the Bane, kill the Jakiro, but Slark is still alive. He's gonna go straight for it without me. He's gonna bring it down super quickly. Chaya has already used a Sonic Wave. He doesn't have enough t damage to actually kill off the Slark, which is so tanky at this point. Chain Frost will bounce away, but cancel. Well, he's gonna actually take a couple bounces from it. Slark's still going after this Tusk. He's gonna chase him down to the ends of the earth. In the meantime, the main fight, Bone 7. Caught by Slark, uh, Skylark right now. Queen of Pain will drop to the Zeus. Cancel. Now in one versus one with the fish, but now it's two for one. He has a fish of his own. Coming in fast, and the pounce is there. Keeping Skylark at arm's length. He'll also kill off the Lich. Snowball in to maybe next time, but you don't want to tango with this Slark. He's big and he's bad, and now Tusk doesn't have any answers. It's going to be a triple kill for Visa on this Slark, and that's good game. Okay, there's there's buybacks on Golden Boys. I don't think it was necessarily over yet, but Slark, man. You don't mess with Slark. But I think the bigger takeaway, perhaps, is that you don't mess with Bane. Dude, Bane is legit. Like, I don't have to tell you guys that Bane is a good hero, I'm sure. And he, and he is a good hero, but Bufni's Bane, 
that was something that was something else like that grip in the middle of that last fight though there was the snowball to eventually interrupt it got the shadow fiend off the table for what like three four seconds something along those lines because even though he was in the snowball he wasn't in the fight like he was like you know outside of the fight in the snowball so that Bane play, that definitely had a fair share of uh, impact in that last fight. So Bufini's Bane, overperforming for sure. Uh, the Slark and Zeus obviously dropping all the damage in the world, but uh, for Kaipi, it is going to be a win no, no matter how you slice it. Golden Boy is putting up a really good fight. Uh, I think the fact that Skylark died one too many times might have been, you know, that might have been the tipping factor if they get a Blink Dagger like two minutes earlier. That's not really like that significant. Maybe they could have had that victory. But either way, it is going to be Kai P's game one. We're going to be moving on to game two, guys. I'm Mike Loris. It's been a pleasure casting this game for you. And I'll be right back in just a little bit for the second game between Golden Boys and Kai P. Don't go anywhere.